Um, what what three words would you use to describe Indian Market? Chaos. Reunion, family reunion, and I don't know, like an explosion. I think that's how I describe it. Hi, I'm American Meredith. I'm Swedish Cherokee, and I'm a painter, and sometimes printmaker. This time period right now is that one month before any market where I'm in my studio, staying here all night, you know, getting the hand cramps, painting, 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 because uh, it's not only indie market for me, uh, I have shows coming up at Legends, I have my tribal show, the Cherokee Homecoming show, so I want to get two pieces in that, and I have a commitment to illustrate, uh, do 15 illustrations for a book about my tribe's oral history, so I'm really excited about that, so I'm hoping that can inspire work for Indian market. And that's composition, just trying to tie different elements together. So these are these are gonna be illustrations for different animal stories, so I'm just sketching out different animals and incorporating a kind of pre-contact iconography pottery designs. Describing my personal style is a challenge because I think I'm schizophrenic, so I kind of made that my style, that I'll have decorative elements, I'll have pre-contact elements, I'll have urban contemporary elements, so I think any of my pieces you're going to see are coming together of just completely different styles. And I'm really text-oriented, I really like writing, and I think uh, the Cherokee Syllabary is probably the most important uh, visual symbol of who we are, like you see the Cherokee Syllabary, which there's some right there. Um, and you think Cherokee, if you know what you're looking at. But uh, So I do use a lot of text, and recently I've used a lot of uh, found text, like traffic signs, and stickers, identity cards. So a lot of text. And uh, my palette is, you know, it's going grayer, I think, a little bit over time. But um, I'm tend to draw into the same colors. Paint's gray, navel's yellow. Uh, uh, and then, uh, the quinacaridones are my favorites. So, this is Sequoia. There were no portraits of him while he was alive, so it's anyone's guess what he looked like. But he really did carry a pipe everywhere he went and wear a turban. And he invented the syllabary, the writing system that the Cherokees use. This is uh, his original um, number system. He also created a number system, and no one really uses this today. And there's a folk story about this white butterfly that, you know, came to him in a visioning. It's just a folk story, but uh, gave him the idea. And the themes, the ideas, I think the idea of freedom and the idea of that recurs in my art. Um, I do a lot of portraits of Native American people to show kind of the diversity. Because people look at me and usually they think, oh, you're not Native American at all. Because I don't phenotypically look like that. So I put a pretty broad spectrum of uh, full blood Indians today, uh, historical Natives, mixed blood, mixed black, mixed Asian, mixed European. So just kind of the wide range of diversity of what individual people look like. And um, plants too, like um, an integration of uh, people integrated with plants, integrated with animals, you know, people that are integrated in their environment. And sometimes that's a rural environment, sometimes that's an urban environment. And that's something else that comes up is kind of how different in today's world the rural lifestyle and the urban lifestyle is and how it seems like they're moving kind of further and further apart. series is connected to the series on the wall with those guys and they, I started in San Francisco because I was a bike messenger and those are both uh, Navajo bike messengers well he's Navajo Creek the guy on the left but uh, it was about living in the city and dealing with these kind of silly post 9-11 like paranoia these hoops people have to go through because all the bike messengers have to get these stupid stickers to go in any of the buildings downtown so I just started collecting the stickers and kind of incorporating in this, uh, this artwork. So I'm continuing it, and it's more about these birds. And these are all, uh, this may not look like Native American art, but these birds, all the birds in it are uh, indigenous. This is a peregrine falcon. Yeah, if I'm sitting in front of something for two months, I have to think it's pretty funny. I have to have something that inspires me to keep working. So, for instance, the piece I have right now, uh, uh, I just threw in a fortune cookie that I got at dinner last night because I had Chinese food. So I was kind of throwing little elements to at least amuse me. 
Yeah, it's funny because um, my great great uncle is Will Rogers, so he's kind of known as this goofy comedian guy. But everyone in my family is like, no, nah. everyone back home was, you know, they're all funny. Everyone tried to outdo each other, like tell more jokes than the other. So he's just the one that actually went out to Hollywood and got famous. But I think everyone tries to deal with things with humor, especially hard things to talk about, like really tragic things. Uh, I think humor is a way to be able to go in and look at it and deal with it. Legends has one show coming up that's a, it's a collaboration show. So Melissa Malero, I have some pieces that she started um, between Melissa Malero and I, and that'll come uh, August. This piece is part of the collaboration and um, Melissa doesn't work uh, representationally usually. She works very viscerally, like I said, very um, uh, very textually. So I, I did the drawing of this turtle, and the reason why we're doing turtles is uh, her son has a stuffed turtle, pet turtle named Nima. So we decided this is what we're going to do about Because um, when you're a kid, your, your imagination is so amazing that the stuffed animal can have more of a life than even living things. So... We figured turtles are good departure points. So I did the drawing and then she created this amazing texture on it. And this is actually Cherokee pottery pattern, which also looks like ocean waves. But it's this early old Cherokee uh, pottery pattern. So we're kind of recontextualizing it, giving it a new life. And then um, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna paint the face onto it, you know, kind of make it uh, a little more uh, rounded and then uh, paint the pattern on the shell, because turtle shells, this is an eastern box turtle, they have the most amazing patterns, I mean, they're just incredible. Uh, she works really viscerally, really textually, uh, she's a mixed media artist, so she uses willow sticks, all kinds of different items in her pieces, and they're really visceral and shiny, and me, I tend to work really image-oriented, um, really controlled, I'm not as experimental, so it's really interesting because we are completely opposites coming together. And so far I have one, one diptych that we both have finished that um, I'm really excited about, it's really nice, because it's something none of us, neither of us would do on our own. Yeah, one good thing about Indie Market, which compared to art opening, and art openings everyone's, you know, being shishi, having a good time, I'm talking, but um, at Indie Market, people can come up and they can ask any question about your work, and I'm glad. I want people to ask questions, and I can actually sit down, I can explain it, which is really great, because this is an example, um, you know, if you just look at that, you're like, what's going on? But it's about uh, Charles Curtis, our Native American vice president under Herbert Hoover, and he was a uh, Potawatomi, so I put Potawatomi ribbon work. He's caught in Osage. So I kind of used Pink Panther. This guy's Snagglepuss, but uh, this pink idea of being a uh, white and Indian, red and white, pink. So it's kind of nice to be able to have that little moment where you can actually convey what your what your art's actually about to people. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, the connection with the artist is amazing to see the art and then see the person who made the art, because sometimes it's so incongruous. You're like, what? You made that? No way. And I always think when you actually know who's making art, I, I tend to only collect from people I know, uh, that uh, it adds this whole other dimension to the art. So when you look at it, you think about the person as well. Indie Market, like, it's funny because as an artist, I have to stay in my booth, so I don't really get to run around and visit, so I like to hear <laughs> what's going on. But um, it's so overwhelming that if you're new to Indie Market, uh, you got to do your research. you got to look up your artist, do a little research, plot who you're going to see because it's impossible to see everyone so you have to be strategic.